What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Back with another video. This time I'm filming in the garage. It's been a while since I filmed the video in the garage, but this is a special one. Uh, I actually teased this little video in one of my videos when I went to meets when I took the H2R to a meet. I asked if you guys would like to see a setup video with my motor vlogging setup and a lot of you guys really commented like, yeah, you would love to see that and stuff like that. So I figured let's work with DJI and make this video happen. So this video is sponsored by DJI and I'm gonna be using the DJI Osmo Action 4 right here, which is the same one that I used in that video uh, when I asked you guys if you guys would like to see a setup. So I'm doing a brand new setup. As you guys see, I have all my parts right here and I have a brand new AGV Pista Double R, which is the same helmet that I use for just my daily stuff and all that so this is a brand new one shout out to daisuke racing for supplying me with this awesome helmet i never had the plain black one so if you guys want some gear check out daisuke racing they supplied me with this awesome helmet and also let me know down in the comments below maybe you'd like a giveaway of a agv piece of double r this is literally top of the line so let me know in the comments if you guys want a giveaway of one of these helmets brand new helmet the brand new dji osmo action 4 these are pretty much the only parts that are required. And I will be also showing you some of my settings for the Action 4 and some tricks that may help you start motor vlogging and stuff like that. So please, all right, drop a like and subscribe to the channel because I'm literally showing you how I do things and that could help a lot of you guys uh, if you're trying to start motor vlogging. Of course, the link also to DJI, the Action 4, is gonna be the top link in the description down below. So make sure you check them out and get yourself one of these awesome cameras. You guys have been loving it. So this is the first camera that I've actually switched to and I've used in multiple videos, not just a video, try it out and kind of go back to my original setup. I still go back and forth a little bit, but so far uh, most of you guys are loving this camera. So I've been using it actually a lot in like most of my videos recently. The camera, we have the chin mount. The link is also in the description. These are the mounts that I use. And of course we have the mic. There's a few mic options that you can use, but for this one, I'm going with, uh, it's called Giant Squid Mic, I believe, ironically. Uh, I think that's the name of the mic. Obviously I have the mic right here, as you guys see. And then thanks to DJI, we don't need no media mod or anything like that. So all you need is literally just like a universal adapter right here, like this one, which pretty much connects your audio jack to a type C since this is type C. So that's all you need, this little adapter, your mic, your chin mount, your camera, your helmet, and finally the death cat. This goes on top of the mic right here to kind of help with the wind noise a little bit, even though DJI is already great with that, but that helps even more with that wind noise and to keep the audio a little bit cleaner. So yeah, I'm not just showing you this stuff. I'm actually gonna start doing the install and talk a little bit more about DJI and the setup and stuff like that. And then at the end of this video, we're actually gonna take him for a little test ride with that same setup that we are just about to do. So you can see like, we just did it and I'm out riding with it and I'm not gonna do any post editing stuff. So like, it's literally, you're gonna see the raw quality of this specific setup. So yeah, let's get this going. First things first, let's get rid of the easy stuff right away. So we're gonna put that dead cat on my mic. And as I said, I'm using the giant squid mic. There's another option, which is the purple panda. That's a really good mic too. Now we have this, so this helps with the wind noise. So yeah, this thing, which is also kind of annoying because you're gonna feel it like tickling your mouth and maybe some of these hairs like literally going in your mouth while you're riding, depending on where you position it. So, but it's essential. So make sure you put the dead cat onto your mic. Now we have the mic, the dead cat and the adapter right here. So this is the audio jack that comes with most mics. And then this is the adapter where you plug it in so you can plug it directly into the camera because DJI is amazing and they don't need any other adapters besides this little guy, which saves weight, which is very important on a helmet, especially on such lightweight helmets, which actually I have a scale. So let's put that helmet on a scale and show you guys. So mic is done. I'm using my bikes as tables because I can't use these. Yet. My garage is small, I need to upgrade. So. Can you please drop a like and subscribe to the channel so I can make more money, so I can move out and have a bigger garage? <laughs> it's expensive where I live, okay? Give me a break. I know you guys want me to get a bigger garage, but do you want more bikes or do you want a bigger garage? You know, okay? So this is pretty much all I'm gonna use from this. They give you this, Chinmao gives you this like tether thing 
where you're supposed to connect on the side of the helmet and the string kind of connects your camera. So in case this fails and the camera falls, this tether thing is gonna grab your camera instead of it flying onto the street or even worse, hitting your bike. So if you want this extra safety feature, feel free to install it. I personally do not install it because uh, I'll show you right now how I mount these and it's almost like a permanent mount for them. So that way, you know, it's not really necessary. They also give you an alcohol wipe, which is also essential. And make sure you clean the area where you're gonna stick your chin mount. So there's no dust, no like dirt or anything like that because that affects how well it's gonna stick to your helmet. When you stick this, you're supposed to let it stick uh, for about 24 hours, preferably with some pressure on it before uh, you kind of take it for a ride or you put some weight on it. So the adhesive sticks properly. It doesn't get affected. So this is the life hack that I was telling you about. These adhesives usually stick pretty well as is, but when you're doing, you know, triple digits, stuff like that, of course on a closed track, you do want the maximum amount of adhesive that you can get. So heat it up. So if you don't have a heat gun, you can literally use a lighter. Just make sure you don't really burn it because you don't want it to like smoke and get burnt. Just, I heat it up enough and I kind of like move it around so it's not like constant like this to spread the heat properly. Yeah, that looks good enough. It kind of looks a little bubbly in a way, but kind of like almost like melting, but obviously you don't want it to like burn and change colors and stuff like that. And just like that, we're good. You guys have it, it's stuck. You can see like all the edges are pretty much flush. It's all stuck properly. And this is kind of like the most important part. My other setup, the setup that I currently motovlogging with, that's the first time that one of these failed on me and it was the adhesive and funny enough, didn't disconnect the rubber or the sticky part, the 3M tape, double-sided tape. It didn't come off the helmet. It actually came off this piece, the 3D printed chin mount. And it started kind of like hanging a little bit. It didn't completely disconnect, but enough to hang and like change the angle. So what I've done, which I do not recommend, but if you can, or if you would like to, I used super glue on my last setup, so I completely took off the adhesive and I literally like dabbed some super glue all the way around. Not too much because I didn't want it to stick out from the edges since, you know, I'm OCD and I want it to be clean. And I actually did a really good job and same thing. I let it like overnight with some pressure. Usually what I like to do is set it up like this and balance it somehow. So the weight of the helmet is kind of like pushing down on the adhesive. So if you can do that, that's, that'll be optimal. I don't know where I can do that in here. Even though it's, we're not gonna leave it for 24 hours because I do want to test it out. I do recommend, definitely recommend leaving it for 24 hours so it properly sticks. But we're gonna go on a slower ride just kind of like to show you guys the setup and talk a little bit about the camera. Okay, here to show you that you can always improvise and make it work. I used some of my cleaning supplies to prop the helmet up. As you guys see, the pressure is on that. So I'm gonna let it kind of stick for a little bit. And I do have the scale, so we'll weigh it after that. This is the one that I previously crashed in, so it's not really usable, but we can weigh this one and I can weigh the one that I currently have that has the little chin mount to see if there's any differences at all. All right, on the floor we go. Not in ounces, there you go. Pounds and ounces. And then we place the AGV Pista. And as you guys see, it's 3.42. Let's test it again. Place it a little bit differently just to make sure it's the same. 3.42 again. So that's the weight of the AGV Pista. I'll be right back to get you guys. So now let's weigh the DJI. You actually also don't need this. I put a case around it specifically for, let's say like I was riding and I have a really important footage and for whatever reason, it did go flying. I kind of want to protect the camera as much as I can so the files don't get corrupted and stuff like that. So that's why I put a case around it. You don't have to, I don't think you do, but it's kind of for peace of mind for me. It doesn't add too much weight. The case on this thing is pretty light. That comes with a DJI. Okay, 7.6. Let's try that again. 7.6. Pretty accurate scale, which is good. I already forgot. Uh, 3.42 was the camera, 
plus 7.6. Let's do it with the mic, actually. Why not, since I have them all together here? Or let's do the mic alone. Point zero point nine. It's not much if you put this with it, though. 8.5. 8.5 ounces. If you guys don't know, one pound is 16 ounces. So pretty much like a smidge over half a pound for, for all of this stuff. Hold on a sec. Yeah, 7.6. So this is slightly under half a pound. It just kind of clicked in my head that I'm like, whoa, that's actually really light. Uh, now I'm curious. I should do a comparison video with my GoPro setup and see what the weight difference is. Again, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that video because I literally, as I'm saying it, I'm like, is that true? And that's why I double checked that like pretty much the whole setup is only a smidge over, let's just say half a pound. That's pretty light. Now, in general, yeah, when you put it on a helmet, you do feel it because your neck isn't really designed to hold that much weight for longer period of periods of time. But that's why I love my Pista because that thing in speed, you barely feel it with the wind. I do feel it the most when I'm like filming, aka most of the time when I'm wearing the helmet and walking around, especially if I'm looking down. That's a lot, like technically 3.4 something plus the 8.5. You know, almost we're getting close to four pounds. So if you have four pounds in your head and it's kind of like pushing every direction you look at, you do kind of like, it becomes uncomfortable, but over time I get used to it since I've been filming and doing that for a very long time. So yeah, usually at meets when I'm, wearing my helmet suffocating and with all that weight on my neck it's it's annoying but i do it for you guys <laughs> ocd kicked in when i whenever i see a smudge on my bikes i'm like wipe this is why my merch is extremely soft so i can use it to wipe my bikes <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about osmo action 4 first thing first this is the case as i told you guys so the bottom is magnetic in case you guys missed it in any of the videos that I've done with DJI before. So you literally just two clips on the side, press them, and the thing, it's magnetic obviously, so I have to pull. I heard a bike outside. Anyways, <laughs> it's magnetic as you see, so look. That's why I had to kind of like push a little bit more, but it's not just magnetic, because someone asked me like, do you trust the magnets? Are they strong enough with the wind? It's not just magnetic, there's clips right here. So it's magnetic, so it's easy to put on and then you press them and now it clicked. You hear a click and now, there you go. Now it clicked completely. And now this is not, there's no way you can separate it, especially with like just some wind. So yeah, very solid. Awesome too, because back then with my old setup, uh, I'm already kind of doing a little bit of a comparison of the GoPro setup, but if you guys want, as I said, comment down below and I'll do a full comparison video between the GoPro setup and my DJI setup since I have both and I use kind of both. And we'll probably maybe do one with the new GoPro. So let me know in the comments. So yeah, this is awesome because back then, as you guys see, there's it's a very tight fit over here. So the annoying part about that is that you have to kind of like squish through, push this out and slide this out if I wanna use the camera or transfer videos and stuff like that without having my helmet connected to it. But with this, it's super easy. This whole piece just stays on the uh, helmet and I just clip it and this that's it. And this thing is out, this stays on the helmet. So it's very easy and simple. So as I said, the case is optional. I don't think it weighs much, but since we have the scale, oh man, I just set up uh, on the Ducati again. Okay, I'm not gonna show you guys, but trust me, I'll, ch I'll tell you the true weight. It's, it literally feels like nothing. Why not since we're doing this? One, yep. Tested it twice, it's literally one ounce. So as I said, there's not really much added weight, but it's extra protection for peace of mind and it's pretty easy to. This is why you should put this on. <laughs> that was too funny. I've never dropped almost any of my cameras ever. So that was funny that as I'm talking about protection and safety and having a case on, I dropped the camera. Durable too. Get yours, link in the description down below. <laughs> I'm like a walking ad at this point. Okay, back in the case. Clipped, peace of mind. That's literally what it is for an extra ounce. Why not? Now let's talk about this. Uh, you guys might ask what's up with these attachments, stuff like that. You can honestly Amazon them. There's so many companies and other people that provide these, but it's pretty much just a simple helmet mount, like just Google or look up motorcycle helmet mount setups or anything like that. And they will give you a bunch of these connections you can't really copy directly what I have on this because it depends on your setup, your helmet, the angle you want it. So 
you gotta play with these attachments. Some of my other, I think my GoPro setup is, maybe that's why also it's heavier besides the case and the camera, but also I think I have two attachments because it's bulkier. So it kind of sticks out a little bit further. This is definitely cleaner. And by this being cleaner and more kind of like, it looks more like part of the helmet, not sticking out of the helmet, which in my opinion makes it a little more aerodynamic. My other camera, I think maybe because it's bigger and bulkier in the front where the wind hits it, it does feel a little bit more like, I feel it, you know what I mean? Especially when I throw my head, I feel like the wind hitting it. This definitely, like my first ride, I remember talking about it and I'm like, whoa, this, this feels more aerodynamic. Like I don't feel the camera over there as much, which for me, someone that rides a lot is very important because my neck hurts, man. <laughs> We're getting old over here. Kind of build your own little, it's like a puzzle or a Lego. You just connect them and super simple depending on your angle and all that details, as I said. Very easy. This connects to the chin mount and then you have, I have one link only on this one and then the DJI mount, magnetic, click. Okay, that's it, it's in place. Yep, pulling on it, everything is good. And just like that, you know what, why not? I'll tell you a little bit more about my settings as well and a little hack that I use uh, for a lot of my content that uh, will probably be, be beneficial for almost all of you guys if you're trying to motor vlog and stuff like that. I don't know, this video seems like it's gonna be very long, but I'm sorry, technically it should be like two videos instead of video and a setting video, but while this is getting stuck and a ride video, I'm doing a lot for you guys on this video. So please make sure you drop a like <laughs> and subscribe. We're very close to a million and I cannot wait to hit it. I, my brain honestly can't comprehend hitting a million. We started doing this like two years ago, so this is pretty crazy, but please subscribe. I think we're like 125K away from a million. So it'll mean a lot, thank you. <laughs> starting to sweat in my garage because it's hot out today and I'm filming this. So a like would be very much appreciated. But anyways, yeah, I was talking about the settings. Hello there. Whoa, my SD card says that I have six hours and 18 minutes. Uh, my settings, as I'm gonna show you right here. So it is, I shoot 2.7K actually, not 4K. A lot of people are gonna be like, what? Because my videos on YouTube are 4K technically. But 2.7K is honestly very close to 4K. And when I'm editing the video, I export it as 4K. So kind of like the editing software boosts up the quality a little bit. So technically it's 4K, but if you do shoot in 4K, it's gonna be a slightly better quality. But I do 2.7K because it's a big thing with moto vlogging, with action cams, with everything. Yes, they have improved a lot tremendously with battery life. But at the end of the day, if you're moto vlogging and you're filming for like multiple hours, continuously, especially with 4K, your battery's gonna be drained real quick. As well as your storage. Storage these days is getting ridiculous. You can get one terabyte SD card. So storage isn't as important in my opinion, but it's more about for the battery life. And filming with 2.7K gives you a much longer battery life than 4K. So that's the main reason why I film uh, 2.7K. And that's a little trick that you guys should use. Definitely. So you can still get 4K video while shooting 2.7K. Obviously 1080 is not gonna be as good of quality, especially on a big screen. So I wouldn't recommend 1080. I think that's too old school now and most people are shooting, you know, 4K and plus. It depends on the type of video you're shooting, but for mode of vlogging, I think you do need higher quality because when it's constant, when it's like more still, like what we're doing right now, you don't really need super high quality. But when you're moving, I think the lower quality you have and the worst camera you have, you see it more because everything is moving so much. I don't really know, I'm not a camera geek or anything like that, but I've, I have noticed that it's like more blurry and it's like more pixelated when I'm moving fast. So higher quality is better. Oh, okay, the camera, I set the camera to an auto power off uh, so it doesn't drain the battery. Again, everything I do is to conserve the battery because you never know when there is good content. And for a lot of times, like let's say I'm out riding for I don't know, four or five hours, stuff like that. That's a pretty long time and there's no camera unless you carry around a lot of batteries with you guys and you kind of change it and all that, which I personally don't like doing. That's why I, I do run out of battery often, but you gotta keep in mind, I'm usually out riding for a very long time and a lot of times I film like two, sometimes I film three videos in one day, in one ride out with one battery life. So, you know, if I'm obviously everything is more planned and my stuff is never planned realistically, but if I have ideas of specific topics, not just random vlogs, then I've done that before where, you know, in one day I filmed three videos for you guys. So I definitely did notice that the battery life is better on the Osmo Action 4 than my GoPro. I do, I would say though, I'm using a very old GoPro, so I don't know how the new ones are, 
But if you guys do like this video and let me know in the comments down below, I am open to doing a comparison video with the new GoPro, not my old setup or maybe all of them. The old setup, the DJI Asmo Action 4 and the 12, or yeah, I think the 12 is a new one. So even though I'm not the best at doing these videos, but if you guys want it, I'll make it. So yeah, that's pretty much my main life hack. Obviously I film with the widest angle, 2.7K, 60 frames per second. I shoot 60 frames per second for one specific thing. And that is because I never take my thumbnails with my phone. I never think about thumbnails, which is kind of bad. Sometimes I do like while I'm recording, but I pretty much take my thumbnails from my video. And if I'm shooting 30 frames per second, which a lot of people say look more cinematic, blah, 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 stuff like that. Some people do like the 60 better because it's more crispy and you can see more, not just in front of you, but around you, especially if I'm going to meets and stuff, you wanna see everything. 60 frames per second works better for me if you're doing stuff where you're like flying on the road and stuff like that and you're going faster than do shoot with like 24 frames per second or 30 because it will make it look like you're going faster. That is a fact. Again, that is preference depending on the type of content you're making and stuff like that. But for me, 60 frames per second allows you to see more, which I want you guys to experience pretty much what I'm experiencing, see like more in the meets and stuff like that, you know? And also it's easier when I pause, since there's more frames per second, when I pause, more shots are clear so I can take a screenshot and use it. I'm literally dripping sweat under my shirt. It's hot in here. Okay, you gotta excuse me, I didn't wanna you know, flex on you guys, but I'm literally dripping and I have my gym attire under because I'm going to go work out later, but I'm literally dripping. Look, you can see, unfortunately, the garage is not air conditioned, uh, but what was I saying? Oh, 60 frames per second. So yeah, like I like to pause my video and I'm like, okay, this is a good shot. Or even if I'm thinking about it in the video and I'm like, okay, I can use this as my thumbnail. Uh, then I just do whatever I want to do with my hands or, you know, kind of like taking a picture, but through the video. And then when I'm editing the video, when I'm done with it, export it as 4K, take a screenshot of that and kind of edit it even more, make it look a little bit better. I'm not the best at making thumbnails, but it was turning off again, but I saved it this time. So yeah, I can get a more crisp picture than if I was doing 30, because if I'm doing 30 frames per second, I have to be very still. So the picture comes out more clear, but at 60 frames per second, you have a little bit more freedom because you have more frames as simple as that. So yeah, these are my main secrets. The rest of the stuff is honestly all preference, like how you color your stuff. I'm trying to go to the settings so I can show you guys. My exposure is on auto. Uh, my white balance is on auto as well. The color is normal. I do not color grade my stuff. Sometimes or occasionally if I'm doing like night rides or like the color looks horrible, but most of the time I'm filming with the color of the camera itself. That's why it's kind of important to me because I do post a lot. So. If the camera can do some of this work for me, it means a lot. Uh, my field of view right here, as you guys can see, it's set on ultra wide, which is wider than the GoPro. I will give it that, even though I'm shooting at this uh, high quality. We have my mic set up, which is one really cool thing that I've talked about the DJI before. And that is the fact that you can adjust mic. Now you can't do it right now because I don't have the mic, oh, plugged in into it, but I have it right here. so. Watch this, when I plug the mic, there you go. It gave me another option to control my gain. But it should be somewhere, I don't think I remember that, but if you guys can see right here, there's a little line at the top, and that's pretty much my audio, and it shows, like right now it's too loud, so it's going to the orange and red, and over here it's pretty good. So, but this shows you your gain, and you can control it. Mine is set at plus six, which I'm pretty sure I have it at negative, uh, like eight or something like that. But yeah, this is the stuff where you have to control because at the end of the day, this is gonna be right next to my face, just like that. So if you guys can see now, it's not going into the like red and orange zone, that line that's going, even though I'm gonna be talking louder when I'm in the helmet because that's how it is. You know, you're going faster, everything's louder, so you do talk louder. But for now, we'll leave it at negative eight. And from there, if let's say the audio of this was distorted, it was too loud, then I'm gonna go like negative nine or negative 10. That's a cool thing about this camera. You can adjust and mess with our, your audio. So I think I tried it at zero and it was still crazy loud because the bike can, it's loud when you're riding these bikes, okay? So when you guys hear the bike screaming and it's set at negative eight, that's an example of how loud these bikes are. That's pretty much it with my settings. I don't think there's anything special that I have done. Uh, it's mainly those couple tricks that I told you guys. Uh, obviously there's other preference settings, like for example, 
for me with this so it's easier for me to film i have it on quick shot or something like that where i just press record and the camera turns on and start recording automatically so i don't have to like turn on the camera like this and then start recording it's kind of like a quick access type of thing which most cameras do have but it's very essential for mode of vlogging because i'm just writing click record and then it turns on and starts recording same thing turn it off just stop recording and the camera just turns off saves you battery that way and it's a lot easier to use than pressing two buttons every time you record and stop recording so now let's hope that this stuck enough but let's take this off you can literally see the imprints of the chin mount right there it seems pretty stuck i'm like kind of pulling on it which definitely shouldn't be doing but it's solid i just wanted to make sure that it's not flimsy and it's not coming off right away and that's a big part due to the heating of it that helps it stick a lot better so yeah now let's wait i think it was 3.42 without the mount thingy they're technically the exact same helmet so i doubt there's any differences but let's weigh it with the little chin mount 3.46 let's try that one more time 3.46 again so 3.42 3.46 so that's 0.4 so like half an ounce ish for that little chin mount we got 3.46 right here and what was this oh geez there goes my memory it was half a pound i remember that one a smidge over half a pound which would be eight yeah it was 8.5 for this setup right here a little little under four pounds for the complete setup altogether and now let's connect the mic place it inside the helmet, show you where I place it, and then finally go for a ride. This took a lot longer than I expected, but... So since the mic jack goes in this way, that means we're gonna place the mic on this side. I believe with the GoPro, it's the other way around. So it's kind of a little weird switching between setups because I have a cable hanging, but I'm gonna place it, this, this helmet, I'm gonna set it up with a DJI. So I'm gonna put the mic right here under the cheek pad in here. So disconnect this grab all of this stuff and you kind of gotta stuff all this extra cable under the cheek pad as well what i have done before is gone like some electric tape or just regular tape and tape the mic exactly where i want it to be under the cheek pad uh, i don't think you need that with the agv pista because it's a very tight fit already uh, so it kind of holds the mic in place for you but if you're using another helmet and you see that the mic is moving around a out of place often which affects your audio quality i would recommend kind of like taping it obviously don't tape it from the front just from the side so you know you don't block the mic itself yeah there you go i actually did it pretty well so you guys can see right here is the mic that is preference as i said play around with the angle of it where you place it but i kind of shove it right here it's barely peeking from the side i hope you guys can see this cable going from here you can have it from the side or you can have it right here and then this is your mic adapter which if you're not using you can kind of shove back in there i've noticed that if i have my mic too high up on the helmet then you guys can hear me breathe more which is kind of annoying at least for me um like i don't hear myself breathe especially if i'm like out of breath and i'm filming in the helmet so i try to position it a little lower but you don't want to be too low either because then you start picking up more wind noise which is also annoying so Again, it's all about fine tuning and finding that correct spot for you. Most of these helmets have vents in the front, so you wanna close that. So no air is coming from these vents so you can get the cleanest audio possible. I hope I don't mess up my helmet, but okay. It's almost pretty much carried the whole weight of the helmet. I just picked it up from here. The moment of truth. sliding the camera on see this is why i hate taking this on and off because it does get tight and annoying so thanks to the dji magnetic mount thingy i never have to do that and voila just like that we have a full new setup complete as i said it looks very small and compact and it would look smaller without the case if you opt for that option we get to do the test ride with it and see how it sounds it's a new setup, so I don't even know, but I'm going to leave everything raw, straight from the setup, no editing, no nothing. So you guys can see it first uh, and decide for yourself if you want this. And all the links for all this stuff is going to be in the description down below. And again, I'd like to shout out DJI for sponsoring this video and helping me show you guys this setup and helping you start motor vlogging if you want to do that. But yeah, let's get to riding. I forgot that this is a very new helmet, so it's very, very tight. This is my first time 
riding with it. Again, shout out to Daisai Kui Racing for hooking it up. Check them out for gear, parts, all type of stuff. A little cold start on the Super Duke. Sadly, it is nighttime. Uh, I looked at the footage that I was filming and it was literally an hour long. So yeah, that's gonna be fun to edit, but I guess it's gonna be a long video. Again, these are like technically three videos in one because there is the setup video, there is talking about the settings and stuff like that, which is a separate video, sorry. You remember when I told you guys the little hairs on the DJI mic or on the, on the dead cat are gonna kind of go into your mouth? That's what's happening right now. That's why I'm kind of messing with my helmet to fix it up. But there you go. We are good to go now. But yeah, I took out the Super Duke so there is no wind protection. So you can hear how this sounds with absolutely no wind protection since it's a naked bike. Oh, like why does it look so dark with this new helmet set up uh, so most of the time I don't ride at night as much anymore or at all so I put a <laughs> I have no idea what he said but he was screaming because I'm on a bike I'm assuming but yeah I can't see as well because it has a dark smoke uh, visor on this helmet to fit the dark theme of the helmet since my iridium has like a clear uh, spoiler, I put the, uh, the light smoke visor on it, which looks amazing, fits the helmet a lot better. But because this helmet is all dark with a dark spoiler, I put the dark tint visor on it, which would be really nice during the day because I don't really ride at night as much. I forgot that I have no rear ABS, so it's kind of like fishtailing everywhere. Are my headlights even on? Why do they look so dark? Like, this is my visor up right now. High beams, where are you at? Yeah, these are my high beams on. Wow, the Super Duke's lights are pretty dim for whatever reason, which is kind of weird. But yeah, I'm curious like to go back and edit this video for you guys because I personally want to see how uh, this setup is and how it sounds and all uh, and do minor tweaks maybe if the audio is too loud as I said reduce the gain to maybe negative 9 negative 10 maybe if you're hearing too much wind noise maybe raise the mic a little bit if you're hearing me breathe too much then lower the bike a little bit or tuck it in a little bit more again there's a lot of custom adjustabilities and stuff like that that you got to customize for your own specific setup uh, but for the most part man I haven't ridden the Super Duke in a while I kind of miss it but yeah that was just a little test uh, not a full vlog obviously just to see how this is doing we went a little bit faster and stuff like that and uh, just to see how the audio is and this is with my visor completely up we did a couple runs like this to see how it sounds with my visor completely up so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video as I said shout out to DJI for sponsoring this video check out the top link in the description and get yourself the DJI Osmo Action 4 so you can start motor vlogging now that you know my exact setup and everything. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this informational kind of like type of video or in the garage videos, let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know if you would like a giveaway with Daisuke Racing for uh, an AGV piece of double R. If you guys want to maybe win one of those helmets, I don't know the details or anything like that, but we can figure something out if you guys really would like uh, one of these helmets because they are at the top of the line. They're about like what 1500 to two grand depending on which one But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please drop a like and subscribe This is a very long video informative to you guys So hopefully I can help you start motor vlogging and possibly make some money uh, on YouTube or Instagram or whatever you Film and post content on oh, I know why the Super Duke is dark is because I have tint on my front uh, headlight. Remember how I blacked out the centerpiece to make it look better? That's why. All right, <laughs> now that we know, I feel better. Cause I'm like, why is it so dark? All right, peace out, safe. Love you all.